Okay, we're here at Lewis Boatworks. We're going to do a little bit of a musings about our shop. And uh, one of the things, I mean, we started off, everyone, not everyone, some people are going, well, that'd be great if I had a big shed like you did. I could do all that. Well, believe me, we started off with a tiny corner of the garage with the little workbench we made, one of the first things we made. Maybe one of the first things uh, you might want to make if you're going to get into uh, messing about with boats. Just a little tiny workbench where you can put a few tools. Start off with your drill and your hammer, and some screwdrivers, and then build from there, depending on what you need. You probably don't need all the stuff we have in here. We kind of get on a project and decide what we uh, what we need, and it's fun buying stuff. So we figure out we need it like we need a, you know, we definitely needed some, uh, let's see what we definitely needed. Well, we definitely needed this little uh, old timey marking gauge, this little scribe here. So we will visit uh, junk shops sometimes to see what's uh, rusting over in the tool corner. And they definitely needed these little 100 foot tapes, the cloth tape or steel tape, and definitely needed, <laughs> you always need tape measure because you never know where they're at. And then you build as you go. I'm trying to look around, see some of the original tools we bought. Specialty tools, this one screwdriver here. It uh, fits in the drain plug slot on the uh, sunfish sailboats. And so does, then we found this one that fits even a little better because those things can get uh, persnickety or sticky and uh, so if you use just a regular small screwdriver, you're just gonna, soft metal, that's just gonna cam out that uh, screw slot and then you're, then you got other issues to deal with. Um, every shop should have a little section where you got PPE, you got some hard go-to's gloves, uh, the nitrile and the uh, work gloves and a mask. And then read the directions on whatever it is you buy you're going to spend hours and hours and days and months and years studying on the boat. But, you know, if you get, if you buy that gel coat, I'm talking to you, someone in Chicago, you know, great lesson, great learning lesson for everyone. If you need ventilation, if you need eye protection, what, uh, what you might have to do if something gets splashed on somebody, know where your sources of water are, know where your, uh, where your, spin you around, know where your fire extinguishers are, you know, put them by an entrance so you're not trying to run into a shop to grab a fire extinguisher, dusty fire extinguisher, stored on the back of a workbench somewhere. So, you know, it's, uh, it's always fun until someone gets hurt and we don't want to read about any of that and we don't want to recommend, you know, hey, go buy this paint, go buy this thinner, go buy this, uh, until recently, it's just kind of been assumed that you'll, people will go, oh, wow, didn't know that stuff was toxic. <laughs> you know, so if it's, I'm going to pretty much tell you if it's going on a boat, it's probably going to be toxic because it's uh, boats are designed to survive as best they can in the marine environment. And, uh, you know, you're not just rubbing dirt on them and taking out there and sailing. Anyway, back to the shop. So we expanded from a tiny workbench with a little tiny piece of pegboard and a few tools to what we have today and a few specialty tools. This little oscillating multi-sander hidden in there. Been great for getting into tight places, into seams, etc. cetera. Uh, got a little sander head to sand in little nooks and crannies, which all these boats have it. And uh, when you find your tool, think about the size. You know, you can get, maybe get the big Milwaukee router on sale with the cord that you got to drag around, but can you get get that into a small space on a boat? We've been happy with this little uh, cordless trim router. You know, they make them in all brands. We probably bought DeWalt because, uh, you know, I like the yellow and black color. And they've got a bunch of tools that go with the same battery system. Yeah, but, you know, uh, there's other, plenty of other brands out there. Talk about your favorites if you got them. Post in the comments. And then uh, go from there. Do you need all of this? No. Do you need a tabletop planer? No. Can you go buy the 
antique shop and maybe pick up some old coffin plane or little number five or little thumb plane spoke shave. You need a spoke shave. I don't care. Either, either an old timey one like this or the, uh, where'd it go? The Stanley number 52 number. I don't know. And, uh, those, those are just fun to work with. You need a few clamps, need some pencils. Gonna need, need some beverages and you need a chair. You need a chair you can sit in called the moaning chair so that when something gets screwed up and it will, a mistake is made. Either the planning or the implementation. You can sit in the chair and contemplate what just happened and try to think forward to the, uh, the next mistake that, that will happen. And that uh, term was coined by Howard Chappelle in his book, Boat Building. And another favorite saying about boat building comes from uh, Pete Culler. And that's uh, boat building is simply about correcting one mistake after another. With the first mistake having been to have begun in the first place. But oh, what fun. And it is fun. So that's our... Uh, I think I started off saying we're talking about musings and should have mentioned ramblings. But what I wanted to talk about in this video was this uh, little shop dolly, work dolly, finishing dolly that we built, originally built it to hold sunfish underneath this 16 foot long, it's actually a ladder frame for a cat boat build that we might do. Underneath it is the little dolly that fits a sunfish and it has some uh, articulating bunks. Sit right in here. These little bunks will articulate to either hold a, provide hull support from whatever angles are on the hull or you flip the boat over and the bunks will move again to be in the right spot for uh, the deck because neither, neither one of them is flat. So we, uh, have that and then we were building the ladder frame this two by six structure that and found out oh well we'll just make it fit on top of the dolly because when we can we like to roll a boat outside and work on it outside on a nice day and certainly if we're sanding we're making dust sawdust or primer dust or whatever we prefer and we've lived, lived in climates and regions of the country where uh, where you can do that. So when you're thinking about shop size, you might be, well, I need, I want to build that finishing dolly they're talking about. And I got to have, you know, I think some boat building books recommend you have two feet on either side of whatever it is you think you're building and on either end. And you can, uh, if you're going to do nothing but sunfish, you could have, let me do math. Could be an 18 by, a little more math. You could have an eight by 18 shop and you could walk around, have two feet on your sunfish all the way around. This is a 12 by 20. Uh, we've had bigger spaces, we've had smaller spaces, but so we're painting today. So example is, all right, painted down this port side first. Now I want to go around to the starboard side. Well, it's against the wall. How do I get over there? Well, I just take it. In this case, one-handed while filming. And move it. So the shop is adaptable. It's flexible. It has utility. Just like the UH-1 November Super Huey helicopter that I flew in the Marine Corps. You want to Take the boat outside and sand all the paint off of it? You can. So if you build some decking around your shop, just build it uh, flush. You gotta step down at one point. Just build it flush with your deck or make the deck flush with your shop. So you can bump it over the door sill and roll it out and work on it on a nice day. And um, I was going to take the, the 16 foot, they call it ladder frame because it, it's got 
cross supports kind of looks like a ladder. This is a very bad ladder because there's rungs missing. Because then you might set up your mold for a boat here and then a cabin mold and a mast trunk mold. And up in the bow stem, you might have some kind of mold up here, set those molds up and then you build your boat or shape it around those molds. I was gonna take it off and go, that's kind of big. And then Skipper, because Skipper is Skipper, looked at it and said, well, it might make a good table. Might make a good table, might make a good table, might make a good table when Skipper says something three times that usually I'll listen and hear by the third time. So guess what? It's made an awesome table. I've had the plans down on one end pretty much the whole time, trying not to spill too much paint on them. And then down on the other end, I've done some, uh, could lay a you know, smaller piece of board down. I've done some varnishing. I've left some scissors hanging precariously on the edge of the canted thwart. And uh, so that's, uh, it's worked out great. And as it turns out in our shop, it fits. I can push it all the way up against the wall. Um, and it's about, what is it? It's more than 36. Plus, yeah, I don't know. He's where it's anywhere between three and a half, four feet wide. So it takes up three and a half, four feet of my shop from side to side. But that gives me plenty of room over here. And you may have noticed earlier, we've got workbenches on rollers. Got these little tool trolleys that are on rollers. So we can move all this stuff out if we need to. We want to put something bigger in here and put that stuff somewhere else or, or just adapt. It's a transformer. It's uh, going to just change the shape of the shop while we're in here. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend this or some combination of this. Maybe that's your workbench is that size. And yeah, maybe your workbench is that size. And think about your ergonomics. You're gonna be sanding all day long. You wanna have your workpiece on a table that's maybe about elbow height, so you're not, if your workpiece is small, so you're not leaning over or trying to reach up over the top of something. You make the table that height plus your workpiece. And there's common measurements. It's like 16 to 18 for a seat uh, or a little bench you can kneel on and hold a piece down, a carpenter bench. 35 inches, 36 inches uh, kitchen countertop height. And it's that height's for a reason. You don't walk into most houses and find them being 24 inches or 42 inches. This little table's been good, folds up, moves out of the way. But it's kind of short for sanding it find myself stooped over and after sanding for eight hours can get kind of uh, can get kind of sore so roll around workbench has been awesome now that I've moved it to the other side <coughs> I can stop goofing off and get back to painting <laughs>